name actually it took me um, about a year searching for different names to actually decide on Soulfly. I went to uh, Seattle to record with the Deftones and wrote the song which ended up being called in Head Up. But in this song Head Up it says Soulfly. But one year, it took a whole year until I was like, so fly, you know, this, that's a cool name. For a lot of people in Brazil, there's an ancient belief they, uh, when they make music and, and the rituals that the souls of the people fly around them and gives them inspiration and hope. I wanted a name that's uh, it's catchy and strong, but also with a good meaning, you know, positive meaning that reflects um, a new journey for me. What I'm doing carries the same spirit and attitude that I had in Sepultura, but goes beyond with bringing new stuff. I decided to do things different and not you know, not try to copy Sepultura, not make a second Sepultura. Um, instead of that, making a Soulfly, something new for the fans. And that is why there's changes from the first album until now, there's been tons of changes in the lineup. The most uh, shocking one was the last, uh, coming from Soulfly 3 to Prophecy, where I changed everybody. I felt it needed an in inner revolution inside, it had to like, bring everything upside down and, and like lose yourself and, and find yourself again. I called Joe, which is a drummer from Primitive. He was the first guy and Bobby was two friends of ours that mentioned, you know, about Bobby, he's a good bass player. Mark Rizzo is the same. Gloria actually found Mark Rizzo for me. Uh, I didn't knew he was that good. <laughs> Until I sit down with him, it's like shredding, like, whoa, where you been, man? <laughs> Mark brings all the excitement that I had in Sepultura, back to Soulfly with leads, the flamenco parts. Dave Allison came and did some bass stuff on the album that was great. There was this really cool, like, we're putting a new band together feel, you know? And I knew that I was only playing on a handful of the tracks, so. I also kind of nudged me a little bit to make sure I really, you know, kicked some ass on it. It was strange. It was like uh, almost unbelievable in a way how these people were the first choice and click so good. Jack. Un dois. Un dois. Oi! He's not leaving! He's not leaving, sacrifice! He's not leaving! He's not leaving, sacrifice! Yeah, that's perfect. I'm 
Change it happens in life, you know, you cannot plan your life. Things happen and when, when something comes and it changes, it, I try to take advantage of it for the better. So Fly is definitely a new chapter, like a new book. The way I announced it was pretty uh, unusual too. I was in France and I didn't tell anybody. I was uh, doing a TV show with the Deftones. The only person I knew was Gloria and I had live TV and I went and announced the band. Um, right there, boom. I have a new band, it's called Soulfly. <laughs> So it took a while, but then uh, once I got the name, wrote the first songs, stuff like Eye for an Eye, Tribe. I went to Indigo Ranch where I did Roots with Ross Robson and recorded the first soft life. It was really cool. The very most different album I did. There was a lot of guests, you know, Fred Durst, Chino. Mario C is the producer of the Beastie Boys. He produced two songs. We have the Brazilian guys from Chico Science playing drums. Some things I do in SoFly, I couldn't do, do in Sepultura. And, and there's really cool things, actually, that I do here now. Like, we can play um, hardcore metal, and we can play some parts of songs that has even Bossa Nova, or uh, Raga, or influence from new bands like Asian Dub Foundation, or Fundamental, uh, that we listen to, all the way to hardcore. And with Sepultura, I think, um, Maybe it wouldn't work out. People, people were not going to understand. There's a lot of magic on that record, it's, 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 and I, I credit a lot of it to for you know for suffering and pain of what I'm going through with Dana and the band. It was pretty much a, a really hardcore tragedy for me at least, that I've been involved since my, my father's death, which happened in 79, which he died in my arms. Nothing like that happened until Dana's death. It was the second most shocking death I ever you know, been involved because he was living in my house and um, he was murdered. Another reason why it was so shocking it was not a natural death. It was not an accident. He was actually murdered. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, really. I managed to translate all that depressed and feeling, you know, feeling like I don't want to play music anymore, turn that into something good. And, and that's the first album. So yeah, it was, uh, it was exciting as hell. It was like every day was something new in the studio. And in the end, the album now is seen for a lot of people as the craziest SoFly album. <laughs>
there's always a Brazilian corner. You know, songs in Portuguese, and uh, I count in Portuguese in the shows, and I curse in Portuguese. <laughs> Brazil is the where I shape, you know, the place that shape my lyrics, uh, my first, uh, you know, passion for music, why I want to make music, <clears throat> and then later Brazil became the source of inspiration. Even like this instrument I play, the birimbau with one string. I've seen this instrument since I was a kid. Yeah, I never bothered to ever even lay my hand on one when I lived in Brazil. I never paid attention. It was like it didn't exist. I decided to go and buy one and I learned how to play and became almost like a trademark. It took me to get away from Brazil to feel the value of some of the Brazilian things.
music influences is really, um, I, I'll start with who got me into music and that's, we go back to uh, Brazil in 1981 and I saw Queen. My cousin took me to see Queen in a big soccer stadium. And until that point, I wanted to be a soccer player. And after I saw Queen, I liked it more. I, I liked that more than soccer. After seeing them, I got into Queen, and then just got heavier and heavier. Uh, Kiss, Van Halen. And then I formed Sepultura on that, uh, at the time, 19... Uh, 83 was our first EP. I remember my mom, the only thing she says is that you want to be a musician, that's fine, but uh, you're going to go all the way. You know, there's no halfway shit, you know. Don't come back tomorrow and say you don't, you, you don't like it anymore. We couldn't play the instruments, you know. The beginnings were like horrible. The whole band couldn't play. Our first show, um, I remember uh, my guitar was entirely out of tune. And the one guy came, like, you guys ready? Yeah. He goes, are you ready, Max? They're like, yeah, I think so. He touched the strings, the entire thing was out of tune. And he's like, you didn't tune your guitar? And he's like, I don't know, you had to. <laughs> it was like so punk rock like that. Um, even our second record, uh, Morbid Divisions, a lot of people don't know this, but the album is actually out of tune. And some death metal fans love that record. <laughs> And I think that's why they like it. It's so fucked up sounding. You know, it's it's like dissonant. You know, it's it's, it's heavy and ugly sounding because it's out of tune. Uh, so that was cool. Actually, one of those good accidents. Fuck him up that he has to naturally slow down and he can't get that. So maybe fuck that slow down shit, just stop. You know, then, then. That was nice. Can you do that again? <laughs> Make me nervous! <laughs> We've been waiting for that all the whole time, that right there. That's it, bro. You got it. That's it. <laughs> Here we go, jump the 
My dad was Italian and he played acoustic guitar. He could play really good acoustic guitar and sing Italian songs. And plus my dad was a diplomat. He, was, um, he worked for the Italian uh, embassy. And a lot of people consider what I do with music to be kind of a diplomat of, of, of rock, of metal, taking the Brazilian message around the world like that. It's similar to what a diplomat would do. So uh, I think it, it clicks, you know, it's like, the right, the right thing to do, the right job to do. Thank you. 
I think SoFly is more international. Appeals to everybody from Australia to America. We go out of our way to go to uh, Indonesia, <clears throat> South Africa, Eastern Europe, where you don't make uh, enough money. Actually, you lose money and shit like that. But it's not about that. You're actually giving this music to these people that um, they don't get to see every day. And I remember when we'd first get a letter from South Africa or a letter from Cuba. They even got uh, mail like Costa Rica, Iran. Some of these countries, they'd ask you, uh, they'd say, please don't write back to us because we'll get in trouble if they know that we've been uh, writing to foreigners like this, but we want to let you know that you have fans here in Iran. <laughs> So it goes back to me being a Brazilian kid that only got to see one or two shows a year. So when you went to see that show, it was like, wow, you know, unbelievable I'm here. I'm, I'm 
glad that uh, I'm able to repay, you know, give back to other kids, to other fans, what was given to me when I was in Brazil. That's why uh, we try real hard to go to all these different places. You know, it's, it's part of being in SoFly, is to travel. One of the things I love about being a musician is knowing that once you put an album out, it's going to reach so many people. It's awesome. What's up, Soulfly? My name's Joe, <laughs> and I'm here to see you guys. Soulfly! Max Keller is one of the best musical fucking geniuses in the world. I came here to get my ass whipped to your fucking music. That's fucking badass, dude. All right, Max? You guys fucking rock, dude. My name's Lewis and this is Andrew Ortiz. I flew out from Nashville this last week to catch this show here in Phoenix, Arizona. I picked up my little brother in El Paso, Texas, and we drove out today just for this show. We're going to be catching them again in El Paso on the 17th. And all this was just because we love the band so much. Motherfucker. Metal, bitch! Everybody jump! Jump the fuck up! We're not capping, we're not capping. 
Look bad here. <laughs> did one song which is called Moses and it was done in Belgrade, capital of Serbia. It's with a band called Iceburn. I've been trying all these years to mix reggae and, and uh, dub with metal. In a way, continue doing what the Bad Brains started, or The Clash, but uh, take one step further, because uh, Bad Brains was hardcore, Clash was punk, Max is metal, so flies metal, and metal uh, nev quite never really flirt with reggae like that, you know, so I was like, yeah, I have to do this. The usual thing would be to go to Jamaica and, and you know, do something there with a Jamaican guy. That's what everybody expect. So when I heard that this band is from Serbia, I went nuts. Like, yeah, this is great. You know, this is so off the wall. It's, it's so max, it's so perfect. Profs is full of the excitement from Serbia. Shit. He tries to stay. What is being? No 
I want to introduce you. This is my son Igor. Say what's up. Hello. And this is Zion. Say what's up. <laughs> and um, I have a question for you guys. What's your favorite place that your dad has taken you on tour so far? Probably Disneyland. Disneyland. Cool. What about you? <laughs> I don't know. Um, Hawaii. Serbia, Brazil, Japan, Japan, fair enough. Oh. My first son Zion, he was born on a stage pretty much. I remember taking him to see Fate No More when he was six days old. You know, like crazy, nobody would take a kid. Me and Gloria were like, let's go see Fate No More. You know, they're our friends and took Zion, he's just like this little, you know. Before it was even OzFest, when we play with, uh, with Ozzy and Sepultura and stuff, there'd be plenty of times that uh, either we'd be playing or Ozzy and, and our kids would be sleeping on the guitar cases and stuff like that. They grow up on that, you know, it's part of their lives from they don't know any different. At one point, I think somebody asked uh, the Zion school, um, where's your house? And he said, ah, oh, it's in a bus. So much time he spent in a tour bus, you know? Excuse me. And I love to involve the family. Instead of hide that from the fans, like some people do, I decided to do the opposite, actually expose, to say, hey, you know what? It's cool, I have a family, I have kids, and I still go out there and fuck shit up and rock and, you know, there's no such thing you have because you have kids or family that you, you, you can't be, uh, you know, still be the same person, you know, I'm, I'm still the same person. What's it It's Momo, Sapien. So I'm a grandpa. Yeah. This is my grandkid. This is Moses. Yeah? Say hi. <laughs> I talk to a lot of fans that have kids, and they think it's totally cool to listen to music together with their, the kids and be part of it, you know? So I think the family is definitely big. It, on tour, everybody knows the family. He was on a tour from his first month, like first month and then two months, till third month. And then like after two weeks, he came back to the States and on a tour again. So he spent more, more time of his life in a tour than in the house. He's going to be a sportsman, enough musicians oh, in the okay. family. 
<laughs> I think. <laughs> I joke, I say we're the lost tribe of Israel when we go on tour, you know, like every time you see the 20, 30 soul fly people walking around, it'll be us, our family, our dogs. But it's fun, it's cool. Jay Poland, seek and strike! Everybody jump! Who dies straight? Go! Another day, another try. It's the living sacrifice. I get your bullshit wait, here we go. I get your false pretend. Another day, another hour. Take back the power. I'd rather die on my feet. That can be living on my knees.
So far, the show tonight's gonna kick some ass, but it's, uh, it's gonna be good. Everything ends up a thump rock. That's your first lesson in rock and roll. When you're not rocking, punk rock is an excuse. Yo, 
know, this is a perfectly good waste of pixels right here. Stretch it a little bit, mm -hmm. and right before you give it to me, make sure it's, it's in tune with the studio. It's out of tune. Oh, yeah, well, no problem. It's definitely an exciting moment. I think finally uh, people are looking at us a little bit different. Like, hey, this, this guy is actually, um, they're actually quite interesting. And it's quite cool, the stuff they're saying. And um, people look at us uh, ser more serious today. I didn't have to change my sound or my voice. People adopt it, you know, which I like that. I think it would have been, it would have sucked if we all of us knew that we, we sold out, we changed. That's something I mean the fans are, are happy. A lot of them tell me like, thank you for not trying to sing. And I say, yeah, I can't. <laughs> you know, it's, this is my voice, it's all I have is like this. And I will never try to sing anyway. You know, it's like, I have a, a, you know, this is Max's voice. It's always gonna be like that. Sit down. 
what's up? Max Cavalera here. I uh, hope you're enjoying the SoFly first DVD ever. Um, I, we try to give you as much different footage and information as possible. And I just, uh, I just want to thank all the fans for uh, believing in me from the beginning through thick and thin to all the phases that I've been through. Uh, without you guys, I, I wouldn't be here. So it's really from the heart that I, you know, dedicate my music, this video, this DVD to every everybody that has a little bit of uh, participation on the Soulfly or Max history. So yeah, thank you from my heart. Deus abençoe. Valeu.